Hey you guys, today we're going to talk about uh, mental health and trauma and childhood trauma and all of that stuff we don't deal with on a regular basis. Um, we've, uh, we've always had this stigma or this thing in our communities about talking to somebody or getting counseling or therapy and all of that kind of stuff, right? Because we all have been told and had this, had to live by this, this thing, uh, what goes on in this house stays in this house and all of that type of foolishness actually. And so, um, so a lot of stuff we grew up with and saw and heard and did and been through, uh, we carried into our adult lives, right? And, uh, and we don't deal with them. We don't talk to people about it. We don't um, uh, we don't mention it most of the time, and different stuff like that, right? But the the thing I've learned is that if you keep it all right, so I so let's just put it in perspective, right? I I see a, a therapist, right, and uh, my therapist told me something that that really hit home. Well, he told me a few things. Every time I talk to him, I usually find out some different stuff or not find out different stuff about myself because who know, knows me better than me, you know, other than God, but who knows me better than me? I know what I've been through. I know what, what plagues me. I know what I'm dealing with on a regular basis, what I've, it's like, and I'm the type of person that I carry everything with me it's like it's hard for me to let go of certain things it's hard for me it's hard for me to let go of anything really most of us are dealing with that and we don't realize we're dealing with it it comes out in our everyday lives the way we deal with other people the way we deal with situations you know just the way we deal with life in general you know and so my plea to you is is that you know if that's you Get some help, you know, and I and trust me, I was the most <laughs> a few years back. You couldn't tell me nothing about counseling or therapist and all of that, because my thing was just like everybody else. What happens in this house or this mind, this house <laughs> stays in this house. You know what I mean? But eventually, what 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 what's all in this house or this mind? or this situation is eventually going to be too much. And in my opinion, that's where the mental health issues start. You know what I'm saying? It's like small things turning into bigger things. You know what I mean? Again, if that's you, you know what I'm saying? Don't feel some kind of way about seeing somebody or talking to somebody because I was at that same place too. My wife is actually a social worker. She's not that type of social worker, you know, but I used to tell her all the time, I ain't let nobody pick my brain and what them people going to tell me about me that I don't know about me and they can't fix me and if God can't do it, it ain't going to get done and all of this type of stuff, right? So I get it. I was there. But in most cases, ain't nobody trying to fix you and ain't nobody really trying to pick your mind. It really boils down to you talking about it. And the more you talk about it, and the more you, um, what's the word? The more you talk about it, the more you'll think about it on a different level. And the more you'll see those patterns and the more you'll know, because we all know why we do what we do. We all know what we angry at. We all know what we didn't like as children or had issues with or what bothered us or didn't bother. We all know where most of our issues stem from, you know what I mean? And most of, most of them are childhood traumas, things that happened to us when we were children or, <coughs> excuse me, things that, or even some things that happened in our adult lives, but we never really dealt with them on a, a level enough to, to take to basically 
deal with them, deal with them, take care of them, get get to the bottom of it, get to the root of it and and work through it and all of that. Because a lot of us, myself included, we uh, what's the word we avoid. And that's that's always been my thing. Avoidance, you know. It's like if I don't want to deal with it, that's enough. I'm done. I ain't fooling with it. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of that came from my childhood because my dad was that type of person. He was a strict dad. He was fun too. He had all of you know all of these different qualities, but one one part one part was that he was real strict, and he didn't like a lot of bickering back and forth. So. Whenever, um, whenever we would get into it, as, you know, the kids or whatever, we would get into it and then try to say what he did or she did. Or he, once he got to a certain point, it was like, that's it. I don't want to hear no more. Don't say no more. Don't. And, and y'all know back in them days, you couldn't just stomp off or, <laughs> or blow, <laughs> blow no air or <laughs> none of that. You just had to shut up. And keep it moving, you know what I'm saying? So, but anyway, um, so yeah, a lot of that comes from that. But the opposite of that, or the other side of that, is I'm also the type of person that in certain situations, it's like, you know what? F- forget it. I'm going to say what I'm going to say, and ain't nobody going to stop me from saying it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and And so... With that being said, people, people, some people feel like maybe you shouldn't say this, maybe you shouldn't say that, maybe you shouldn't do this, maybe you shouldn't do that. But I'm like, at this point, we already here now. So I'm going to say what I got to say and ain't nobody going to stop me from saying what I got to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, who going to pop? <laughs> you know, but but for real, on a the, on the serious note, a lot of that stuff follows us. In life, you know what I'm saying, and the things that we were angry about, the things that we didn't fully get to um, clarify or fully get to explain why this or why that, and then when you hear, you know, you just mean or you just fussing all the time or you just this, all of that kind of stuff stays with you too. So, so basically, what I'm saying is, go talk to somebody. Deal with those issues. Another thing of mine, it's like I'm not going to them people and then they're going to want to put me on this kind of medicine and that kind of medicine. I, I ain't with all of that. You know what I'm saying? But it's not always about that. It's just about getting to the root of what you're going through. And, and nobody can fix you. So it's not one of them type of situations. I mean, in our minds, we look at it like that. That uh, them people can't fix me and this and that and all of that. But it's not even about fixing you. It's about opening up different ways to look at life or look at what happened to you. There have been a few moments in my therapy that were like aha moments or the light coming on. My therapist told me something that really tripped me out. It was like, it was time for me as an adult to stand up for that child. You know what I'm saying? And that made, it sounds crazy, but it made so much sense. You know what I'm saying? In other words, what I got from that, and and, and I'm still digging into it, but what I got from that was that, you know, okay, that happened to you. This happened to you. You felt like this. You felt like that. But what you going to do about that now? As an adult, now you got a voice. Now you got, you know what I'm saying. You 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 got a voice. You can you got a mind. You can speak for that child. You could make things better. Even though we know we can't go back to, ch- but y'all get it. So that was like real deep for me. You know what I'm saying. And, and stuff like that makes you feel like you know what, you know that's right because I I'm. If in reality, in my mind, I'm a full grown man and I'm an adult and everything like that, but I'm still mentally living through that kid's eyes or or through that kid's feelings or emotions, 
then it's time for me to stand up for that kid, you know what I'm saying? Or that child and, and, and say that wasn't cool or this ain't cool or you shouldn't do that or you shouldn't do this. Or, but basically all I'm saying is, is that we all have issues. We all have something, you know what I mean? Uh, and like I always say, your something is different from mine and mine is different from the next person's, but we all have something and even if it's not about seeing a therapist, I believe that we should take some time for mental health, mental health, and not just saying take a day off from work because you got that option for a mental health day, <laughs> but just sit around and watch TV or go hang out at the park or whatever you do on your off days or stay in the bed all day, whatever, but to really take some time and dig into the stuff that we're dealing with, you know what I'm saying? Because now we're we're in this atmosphere now where we look at the kids or the younger generation and the older folks always saying, these kids nowadays, they feel uh, entitled to everything and they feel entitled about this and they're entitled about that. And, they, and, and that is a narrative now, you know what I'm saying? Because of what's going on in the world and the way the world has, has changed. But some things you got to look deeper than, you know, what we're looking and realize that a lot of this stuff is just really from mental health issues. And nobody want to say they have mental health issues because, oh, I ain't crazy. I, I'm in my right mind. I know what I'm doing and I know, <laughs> but this is just who I am. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? So nobody wants to say that they have mental health issues, but we all got them. Because at the end of the day, life is stressful, man. It's like, you know, dealing with everything in life, dealing with um, just being an adult, man. It's, it's <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> we used to, couldn't wait to, man, I swear I can't wait to get out of my mom's house. And now sometimes you be feeling like, boy, I wish I was still back there. I'll, I'll go to work and help pay bills and everything, but I ain't trying to deal with all of this craziness in this world. But anyway, yeah, let's just um, try to do a little better when it comes to the mental health side of it. Because, you know, that's why we got a lot of people going through what they're going through. That's why we got a lot of people in those mental health situations and on medications and all, and now with this whole new um, labeling situation now, uh, I remember when my son was real young, he was real busy, but he was a, he was a kid, and that and that's another video for another time too. But my son was a, real, real young, and he was super busy. And the first thing they want to do is label him as ADHD and put him on medication. And I can't remember the name of the medication, but uh, at the time, uh, my wife at the time, she's my ex-wife now, but we gave him the medicine, I think, one time. And it was like he was basically sitting there like a a zombie or something. And I was, I was like, we came to the agreement, look, man, don't give him that no more. We ain't going to do that. Because even though he was busy, I'd rather see him the way he was than to see him sitting there looking like a zombie. You know what I'm saying? That's another thing you have to basically watch out for too. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody is self-medicating, not just self-medicating but the, the people that are in these positions to supposedly help you they're medicating you to you know to, to to have you a certain way and not have to deal with you it's like if I give them this medicine and get them like this then I don't have to worry about them you know what I'm saying they won't be a problem but eventually that turns out to be a problem not just for you or them but for society as a whole, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, so much for that. That That's a whole nother topic that I can go into and I'm not. I just want to tell y'all again, make sure you stay on top of your mental health. Make sure 
you talk about some things. No, we don't want to talk to to Barbara and Bob and Jim and Joe about it because you talk to them and then Sue and Bobby and Johnny and everybody and their mom going to know about it. <laughs> so I get that. But go to somebody professional, man, and talk to them because it, it really helps. And again, it doesn't fix. It, it's not a fixing thing. I'm not. They're not trying to fix you or you fixing yourself, but it, it just opens up a lot of thought process behind it. And it helps you to deal with other things. You know what I'm saying? It's just like my insecurity stuff. And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes I get in this feeling of needing to be validated. And I think we all have that. That's just something that I think we all have to some extent, some more than others. And um, and then my therapist, he was telling me and we know it because for those of us, those of us who are believers. You know, we believe that everything we have need of is inside of us. We believe that everything that all of the gifts that we have come from God and all of that type of stuff like that. Right. And so the thing about it is what he was saying is that. Think about it like this. God believed in you so much that he gave you the gifts that you have. You know what I'm saying? To represent him. And so with all of that, he he had to have some kind of trust that you would do right by it or trust in you to give you that. Right. But here's where the problem come in. He trusts me. But I don't trust me because I'm always worried about messing up and making mistakes and not letting go because I don't want to look like a fool or I don't want to. So that's all me. I, 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 I don't, you know what I'm saying? But he already gave me what I need. If I just trust that and trust that he's going to make it do what it do because he's the creator of it, he gave it to me, then all of that other stuff would be basically null and void. I, w- I wouldn't have all of those insecurities or all of those certain types of feelings about certain things and not wanting to let go and really let my gift be what it can be or do what it can do and all of that kind of stuff. So anyway, just touching on a few things to let you guys know that I'm not telling you something I heard about. I'm telling you what I know. And I don't know at all. I know a little bit, but I like to share what little bit that I do know. And and just to say that it can help. You know what I'm saying? And whereas one time I wouldn't have thought about it. Now. I wouldn't miss it. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? This one last thing I want to say is if you do decide to do that or for those of you who are doing that, just remember Because I heard this from one of the people that I follow on TikTok. I think she may be a therapist. I'm not sure, but, you know, the motivational people, I follow some of those people and I can't remember her name. But she said, which is so true, that once you do start your journey of healing and all of that type of stuff, you got to give other people kind of give people leeway because they're not there. You know what I'm saying? Just because I I start a journey to heal where I've been broken or whatever, I can't expect for the next person to be there themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm because I'm learning about mental health and healing and all of this kind of stuff. I can't hold you accountable for that because you're not there. You know, or the next person is not there. So I have to still give grace just like God gives me grace and mercy and all of these different things. And I still have to know that my journey is not yours and it'll probably probably never be. But I just have to understand because a lot of times when we do start to learn things or heal in certain areas, naturally, For some of us, we want to pass it on and we want to see our loved ones or the people that we know or even anybody who will listen, because that's always been my thing. I like to pass on what I learned. 
Do you know what I'm saying? And so the key is to pass it on, but not expect you to get it the way I got it or as soon as I got it or expect me to get it how you got it or as soon as you got it, you know, because all of us are going through. All of us have our own set of issues and all of us have our own timing. And when we're going to deal with that or if we deal with it or you know what I'm saying? So just keep that in mind that that once you do get on your journey to heal, everybody is not going to be there. So you got to remember that you were there once before and you got to remember to give grace and mercy to those other people that are not where you are. And most people won't, may never be where you are, you know. But even though we feel like we're doing it in love, you know what I'm saying? We have to really do it in love and and realize that your way ain't going to be mine and mine ain't going to be yours. So again, y'all take care of your mental health. It's really important. Do it at your pace. Do it at your time. But just do it. Make, make the effort. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. 